All right, time to get back in the swing of things. What's up, guys? My name's Glassfoot. This is a critical review of It Chapter 2, the sequel to the 2017 It movie. This movie is actually really, really good. It's entertaining, there's a lot of fun stuff, but it has quite a few problems. One of the biggest ones, right off the gate. It's not scary. It is funny, there are a lot of funny moments, but overall the movie's not scary in and of itself. It feels like a comedy with horror elements as opposed to a true horror film. And it's, depending on what you want, uh, that can be a good or bad thing. So I'm putting this out there right now. I've never read the book. I've seen the miniseries from the 90s, but I've never read the book. That's because the book is so thick that I did not feel like taking over that endeavor of reading it. So I don't actually know how the book ends. So I don't know um, if this movie is super accurate to the book or not. But um, I can say that the changes that it makes from the original miniseries I liked. And I say there are changes from the original miniseries. I mean, how it goes about showing that these characters are getting messed with by Pennywise this time around. There's a point in this movie where they each go to their childhood to different locations to try and find things for the ritual of Chud um, so that they can stop Pennywise. If you're watching it, I'm assuming that you know about that plot point from the book in the original. So... Not counting that as a spoiler, but they each go around to try and find their own individual token, as they get called in the film, uh, to f to do the ritual, and um, Pennywise messes with each of them in a different way. I'm not getting into it, but the way that he messes with them, I actually very much enjoyed. Uh, it was really fun to watch how each of them uh, got messed with. The acting was very, very good. There were parts that I thought were a little wonky. Uh, that's more of just how what is specifically written. Um, it, when the characters first meet up again, uh, there's a bit of weirdness there towards the end of that scene. Um, but overall, the actors are very, very good. Uh, Bill Hader, the guy that plays Richie, is probably my favorite. Uh, he, he's, uh, he, he's very funny. He's actually probably the most logical in if you were an adult that ended up in this situation where you were like, uh, you basically came back to kill this thing, and you're like, nope, I, mm, mm fuck this, nope. This movie is both an hour too long and an hour too short, as my friend Zane put it. Um, so this movie drags. There are a number of parts that I would have said completely cut out of the film, and you wouldn't notice the difference, like, at all. It would have felt like the same film. And then, the information that I wanted to have more info on, aka the ritual, how it was initially performed, stuff like that, you know, isn't actually explained, like, at all. It's very much glanced over. Um, and the way that they beat him at the end, uh, kind of goes against the rules that the movie itself stated were the rules. So, don't know how to feel about that personally. Overall, this movie is greatly, greatly enjoyable. Um, if you, it is a lot of fun. There are parts that are really nyeh, but there are parts of nyeh with it. almost every movie. So, I'm not gonna really rag on it too much. If you wanna watch It Chapter 2, I would suggest going to see it. It is, I mean, it is an entertaining film. One last thing before my rating uh, I wanna talk about. Uh, skip to this part of the skip to this part of the video if you do not wish to uh, know uh, this information. Forced representation is a problem that I personally have with. Um, Underrepresentation, overrepresentation, and forced representation are three problems that I think. Underrepresentation, I think everyone should have equal representation because you know. Equality as an egalitarian, I personally believe that. Um, Underrepresentation, but overrepresentation when you try and force a situate force um, representation into a situation that doesn't need it, aka making a character gay, but basically only using the gay stereotypes to make the character not actually writing the character, and then just having them be gay um, is another problem that I have. And then 
my purse and then forced representation also kind of falls into over representation when you force a subject into when you force something that doesn't really need to make sense to basically seem inclusive LeFou from the Beauty and the Beast remake and a line from the Power Rangers movies are two examples of this where LeFou at the very end kind of pulls a guy close and it's gay but could easily not be and then a line from the Power Rangers movie where they ask one of the characters if she had girlfriend problems but that's not really elaborated on. The problem with forced representation is that you go into this rabbit hole of look I'm so inclusive but you're not actually and I kind of got that sense from this movie. Again, never read the book and in the original movie this isn't stated but I would like to know but um in this movie it is implied that Richie is gay kind of but not really so it's something that just confused me but yeah it's something I just want to touch on uh but none of my score for me this movie overall rolled a score of 14 it's very enjoyable entertaining as a very entertaining movie but without really any horror scares poor CGI and just the fact that it felt more like a comedy as opposed to a true horror film um, lowers the score for me substantially. Still greatly enjoyable. If you want to see it, uh, I recommend it. Um, a question I would like to pose to all of you. What is your favorite horror movie, uh, either from when you were a child or now? Uh, just would like to know. Tell me in the comments down below. Uh, if you would like, follow my Twitter and Instagram. Links are going to also be down below. And, uh... Like, comment, subscribe if you feel so inclined, and as always guys, have a great day, peace and peace.